Fun. Uh, we have not met before. My name is Adam, and from my family to yours, Merry Christmas, everyone. We are here. Christmas Eve is here. Christmas has arrived. I know it's been in a uh, busy season for many people, but man, I'm so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Um, it is a incredible time of year, and I hope that you are uh, ready for Christmas. Anybody ready for Christmas in here this morning? And by that, and by that, I'm kind of saying to the men in this room, I hope that you're ready for Christmas. Maybe on the way home today, you're making a detour off to the Orange Park Mall to, to get some gifts for your spouse or for your family. So I hope that you're ready for Christmas. And if you were one of those people where you've waited to the last minute and you're getting gifts uh, today, then, then here's the thing. I am praying for you. And I pray God's grace and favor on your life as you go. Uh, Speaking of favor, that's exactly what we're talking about this morning. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. We're going to read this together. Verse 26 through 38. Verse 26 through 38. Luke chapter 1. Here we go. Now in the sixth month, so something about this where it says now in the sixth month, this is talking about in the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, uh, who gave birth to John the Baptist, John the Baptist's mother. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Say that with me, found favor. favor. For you have found favor with God and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a child, conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. Verse 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible." You got to know that with God, no matter what circumstance that you're in in your life, no matter what you might be going through this morning or what you will be going through at some point in life, nothing is impossible for God. You've got to know that nothing is impossible for God. Verse 38, then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I've entitled my message this morning on this Christmas Eve. Highly favored, highly favored. If you like my notes, you can text notes to the numbers on the screen and what's in front of me will be in front of you. Can we all just take a moment, let's pray together. God, we thank you, Lord, for your son being sent to this earth. God, what a miracle, God. Lord, you didn't have to come, but you chose to come. Why did you choose to come? Because you desired relationship with your people, God. You desire friendship, relationship with us. And so, Lord, you sent your only son. So who would believe, whoever would believe in you would not perish but have everlasting life. And so, God, I pray that today, God, that we'd have a new revelation of your love for us through your word. Lord, I pray today, God, that you would make your word alive in us. Lord, just as I often pray every single Sunday, God, Lord, teach us your ways. For we want to know you and find favor in you. God, make your word alive. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you. And everyone said this morning, amen, amen, amen. 
You know, there's things about Christmas that are my favorite things. First off, Christmas is my favorite holiday. Anybody else just say Christmas is my favorite holiday? Yep. So, so Thanksgiving is a close second, but what I love about Christmas, it seems like it's a lot longer as far as celebrating, a lot more anticipation. Thanksgiving kind of kicks off the Christmas season, but uh, Christmas time is my favorite holiday. What, what I love about Christmas is really, uh, one thing is, is Christmas morning. It's really my favorite morning of the year. Uh, what I like about Christmas morning is not necessarily the getting of gifts, but the food. Anybody know what I'm talking about? My wife wakes up and she makes a spread for us. I mean, we got cinnamon rolls, this egg and sausage casserole that we do every single time. And so what I love about Christmas morning is the food. And then I get to give gifts to my kids. You know, when I was younger, I liked to receive gifts. But now that I'm older, I like to give the gifts to my kids and to see the love, the joy on their face, the anticipation. I was uh, driving my kids even this morning and I asked... um, Caleb and Ruth, they're 11 and 12, I said, hey, what do you think, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? And Ruth, she suddenly said, it's the gifts, Dad. And then she came back, she realized that was probably the wrong answer, but I think that's probably the answer inside of her heart, because I was definitely that way when I was a kid. She goes, no, it's, the fam- it's family, Dad. I said, no, it's okay, Ruth. It's okay to say it's the gifts. I was there at one point, it is the gifts. But what we all really do love about Christmas, though, is what? It's, it's Jesus. It's celebrating him, that he came for us. Christmas time, Christmas music, it might be uh, some of your favorite music you get to play at that one time of year. You know, we decorated our house starting the first week of November. Where, yes, we were one of those people. You know what I'm talking about? We started way, way early. We started listening to Christmas music before Thanksgiving. I know it's kind of like a sin in a lot of people's eyes, but we don't care. <laughs> we didn't put up the tree until after Thanksgiving, so there's that, you know. Hey, kids, what are your favorite things about Christmas? Somebody yell it out real loud. Family, what else? I I can't really hear everything they're yelling out. I probably shouldn't have done that because I just stirred the pot. But there are certain things about Christmas that are our favorites. I'm sure they said food. I'm sure they said gifts. I'm sure some of them said the the appropriate answer, which was family. Christmas lights, I like that, yeah. It says in verse 28 and verse 30 that Mary was favored by God. She was favored by God. Let's look at this together. Verse 28 says, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Now verse 30 here. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. This is what I'm going to do this morning on this Christmas Eve. I want to answer four questions. Four questions surrounding this passage that we read earlier. Number one, number one, the first thing is this, does God have favorites? Does God have favorites? Now you, you might be thinking right now, well, Adam, uh, I, I might be favored by God, but I'm not highly favored like Mary was highly favored. You might be in that boat right now where you're thinking that way. Uh, Abraham, uh, Abraham said this in Genesis that uh, Lord, if, if I am favored in your eyes, and we know that Abraham was favored in the eyes of God. Later on in Genesis, Jacob says, if I am favored in your eyes, Lord, we know that Jacob was also favored in the eyes of God. Daniel, he says the same thing. It says about Daniel that he was favored by God. Esther was favored by God. Ruth was favored by God. Hannah, the, the uh, mother uh, of Samuel, was favored by God. Again, you might be saying, Adam, I know that those people in the Bible, man, they're they're, they're highly favored of God, but I might just be a little bit favored. I don't know. But what are all the things that are in common with these people in Scripture? They're all what? They're all children of God. They're all children of God. So if you are a child of the Most High God, I'm here to tell you this morning, this is very basic, but I want you to get this. I want you to understand this. You were favored by God. If you were a son and daughter of God, you were favored by God. So let me ask you this question. Are you favored by God? Yes, Yes, you were favored by God. If you were a son and daughter of God, you were favored by God. Now, let me give you a definition of favorite. Favorite means this, one upon whom favor rests. 
It's someone or something upon whom favor rests. Now, if you were to ask me this question, Adam, who is your favorite kid? I would immediately think to myself, okay, my daughter who is 12 years old, Ruth, she's my favorite kid. And I told her I was going to say this, I told Caleb and Ruth I was going to say this before, but ahead of time. And she, she's my first, she's beautiful, she's wonderful. But then I would immediately think to myself, okay, but Caleb is also, he's my favorite. Caleb is my favorite as well. You can have more than one favorite, can you not? Yes. Caleb and Ruth are both my favorite. They're both my favorite kids. Now, when it comes to, this might be a better example for you this morning, for all you foodies out there. If you were to say, what's your favorite food? For me, my favorite food on Tuesday nights is tacos. My favorite food on Thursday nights, well, for me, it's spaghetti. My favorite food on, on Friday nights is pizza. My favorite food when I go on a date with my wife, it is steak and potatoes. Amen? You can have more than one favorites, right? So God, he has more than one favorites. You're son and daughter of God. You are God's favorite. Very basic, but you got to understand it. You are God's favorite. So say this. Say this with me. I am God's favorite. Now hit your neighbor right now and say, you are also God's favorite. Okay, so this leads to the second question this morning. What is favor? What is favor? Because if God's favor rests on you, what is favor? The angel Gabriel goes on and says to Mary, Luke 130, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So I want to look at this word found, but first let's look at this word favor. This word favor in the Greek is this word charis, okay? Charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. Charis means this. It means grace. Charis means grace. So charis occurs about 150 times in the New Testament. Out of those 150 times, more likely than not, it's translated as grace. But here in this particular scripture, when it's it's talking to Mary, it's translated as favor, which reminds me of Genesis 6-8. Reminds me of Noah. Noah says this, but Noah found grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So same thing, Noah found grace. It said, Mary, you have found grace. Noah, you found grace. Think about this now. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for you. Here's the thing. It's not like Mary didn't, Mary found God's grace, right? Mary found God's grace, Noah found God's grace. It's not like God's grace changes, it's not like God's grace goes up and down, increases, decreases. God's grace is always constant, it's always consistent. It's just a matter, have you found God's grace? And when you go through a difficult time, God gives you, 1 John, it says this, God gives you grace for grace. Have you found God's grace? So this leads to the third question this morning. So if God's favor is grace, you track it with me this morning, and grace is favor, here's the third question. How do you find grace? How do you find grace? Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you have been saved through what? Through faith. So here's how you find favor with God. You believe. You find favor, you find grace when you believe. The reason why Mary found grace is because she believed. She believed that when the angel came to her and said, you're going to give birth to the Son of God, but yet you're a virgin, she what? She believed. She had faith. Noah found grace. He found faith. Why? Because when God said it's going to rain, he believed it. What did he do? He built the boat. He built the ark. He found grace because he believed. So this is for salvation, but what about for something else in life? When we believe, we get saved, but we've got to continue to believe. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 John 5. Why? It's because it talks about eternal life, but it also talks about sanctification. Sanctification is the process by which we become more into the image of God. This is a journey, y'all. 
It's a journey with Christ that we are constantly going to go on. None of us have arrived yet. None of us have gotten to the point to where we are, we're perfect. Amen. We are all falling short of the glory of God. This is a process of sanctification. It's a process of becoming more and more like Jesus. It says this in 1 John 5, 13. These things I have written to you who believe. In other words, those who have faith. In the name of the Son of God that you may know. Notice it doesn't say that you may hope. It doesn't say that you may hope. It says that so that you may know that you have eternal life. Watch this now. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Listen to me this. You receive grace for eternal life when you believe. You receive grace for abundant life when you continue to believe. When you believe, you get saved. And eternal life is a gift from God. It's not a goal to achieve, it's a gift to receive from God. When you receive God's grace, you receive the gift of eternal life. When you continue to believe, you receive the gift of abundant life. When you receive God's grace, you receive the gift of eternal life. Another way to say is when you believe, you receive the gift of salvation. And when you continue to believe, you receive the gift of sanctification. So Mary had to continue to believe. She had to walk in faith. She had to walk in grace. So let's just recap everything for a moment. Does God have favorites? Yes, he has favorites. Who are his favorites? All of his children. So what is favor? Well, favor is grace. So how do you receive grace? You receive grace through faith. You receive grace through believing. So which leads me to point number four this morning, question number four. What is faith? What is faith? Luke 1, 38 gives an incredible example of Mary's faith. It says this, that Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord and this is how she responds to this news that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon her and she's going to conceive a child and it's going to be called, his name's going to be Jesus. She says this, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let it be unto me according to your word. In other words, I believe. In other words, Mary's saying, Lord, I God, I, I believe even though I've never known a man before. Even though I'm a virgin, I believe that I'm going to give birth to this son. And his name is going to be Jesus. He's going to be the savior of the world. I believe. Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. And here's the thing about this moment in Mary's life. You would think, okay, Mary, it says that she's highly favored. You would think from this point on, because she's given birth to the, to the Son of God, and she's highly favored, that everything in life is just going to be easy from that point forward. Wouldn't you think that? It says she's highly favored, okay, so life is going to be easy. Think about this with, with Mary. She becomes pregnant, and she's engaged. She becomes a social outcast because of this. No one believes her. They're like, Mary, you're pregnant. What's going on? <laughs> right? And she goes, yeah, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I mean, I wouldn't believe her if she said that to me, would you? And so she becomes this social outcast. And then her pregnancy goes nine months. And, and from Nazareth, she goes to have baby Jesus. From Nazareth to Bethlehem, it's 80 miles. Okay? So she has to travel 80 miles, nine months pregnant on a donkey. So that journey on a donkey is about 20 uh, miles a day, scholars would believe. But if you're pregnant, I mean, you're stopping left and right to use the bathroom because you're nine months pregnant, right? You know what I'm saying? And so that four-day journey might turn into six, seven, eight days. I don't know. And so she's traveling 80 miles to go have the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Not always easy for Mary. And then she's going to give birth to this child in a barn. In a barn. Not a manger, but a barn. Right? So the manger is the feeding trough in which Jesus was rested and laid after he was born. But she gave birth to him in a barn. And so just think about it. Mary is there, and she's given birth in a barn. And you have all these other animals around her. 
and she's probably giving birth at the moment, and she's thinking, okay, there's a cow over here and a cow over here. One of them's probably using the bathroom or something. I don't know. Like, it's a difficult moment where you would say, okay, Mary, you're highly favored. Why is this happening? Why is this going on? And then after she gives birth to Jesus, because of Herod and him wanting to be king, she has to leave and escape to Egypt to save the Son of God. And so she leaves and she has to escape to Egypt, fleeing for her firstborn son's life. Mary's life wasn't always easy, even though she was highly favored, even though she had grace on her life, even though she had favor on her life. Jesus, when he was around the age of 20, they believe, Joseph passed away. And so she lost her husband. Later on, because when she lost her husband, Jesus took over the family business as a carpenter. And then when he turns 30, man, he goes off and he begins to, his ministry and begins to share the gospel and to heal the sick and see people set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then because of this radical message that he preaches, he goes to the, on a gruesome death on the cross and Mary watches her firstborn son being killed on the cross. You would think that because of Mary's life was highly favored, that she wouldn't be walking and going through all of these things, but yet she did. So Jesus gave up his life, went to a death on a cross so that we could have a relationship with him and we could receive this free gift of salvation that is available for all of us. So maybe you're in this room this morning, you might be saying, Adam, my life hasn't been easy. Adam, life is sometimes is difficult. I've, I've gone through some moments, or maybe right now you're going through a moment. Maybe right now you might be saying, Adam, everything feels like it's okay, but in this life we will have trouble. But here's the thing about it. We are sons and daughters of God because we are sons and daughters of God. We have found favor in the eyes of God, which means we have found grace to walk through those difficult trials and moments of life. You know, I look at other people and I think to myself, okay, I don't see how you walk through this life without Jesus. I don't see how you can walk through this life without knowing and have this relationship with God. Because when I've gone through moments in my life that have been hard and difficult, I can't imagine walking through those moments without the grace of God. Because again, grace and favor doesn't mean you're not going to walk through those moments. It only means that God's going to give you the sufficient amount of strength and grace to walk through those times and to walk through those trials. And so my question to you this morning is this. Have you found the grace of God? How do you find the grace of God? What do you do? You believe. You have faith. You have faith. You choose to believe. So maybe you're in this morning, you might be saying, man, Adam, I just need some help. I need the grace of God in my life. I need grace to walk through the circumstance. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, today can be that day where you follow Jesus and you can find the grace that is sufficient for you to walk through any trial, any tribulation, any, any, any circumstance that you might be facing in, in, in life or in your current life. May you receive this free gift of grace and salvation that is available. May you find it today. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes all over this room. If you're in this room right now and you just would say, I've never given my life to the Lord. I need grace. I know his grace is there, but I'm choosing to find it right now through faith. If that is you and you want to give your life to Jesus, would you just slip your hand up right now? I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. I see that hand. Come on. Anyone else? I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Lift your hand real high. You will receive Jesus, this free gift of salvation, of grace this morning. I want to pray for you right now. Would you do me a favor, everyone in this room, would you just pray with me this prayer? Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you want to make that choice in your heart to give your life to him, to choose to follow him on this day. It's the greatest gift you could receive at Christmas. 
Pray this prayer with me. God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you that it's sufficient for me. I thank you that you died on the cross. You rose again on the third day. And now I can have life eternally with you. I choose to believe this day and confess you as Lord of my life. So come in and be my God. Be my Lord. Be my friend. I choose to follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, all of heaven is rejoicing with you. I also want to pray for the second group of people this morning. If you are struggling, if you're going through a circumstance, I want to pray for the grace of God for whatever you're going through this morning. Would you just pray with me? God, I pray, Lord, for those who are going through a season of difficulty, a season of trial, that, God, you would give them the grace to walk through that. Lord, we know that in this life we will have trouble, God. Lord, following you doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy, God. This wasn't easy for Mary. But, Lord, it does mean that, God, you're going to give us the grace to walk through it, God. And so, Lord, I pray for strength in this room, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we believe in you. We have faith in you. And, Lord, we thank you that, God, you're a friend that sticks close to the brother, and you are walking with us. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you rise with me?